What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video on the channel or podcast, if you're listening on Anchor. Uh, today is Monday, and on Mondays we do Brest of History uh, from a sefer called Siyach Sarfi Kodesh, which is a eight-volume sefer of Brest of History and stories and just amazing information. And we've been learning this sefer uh, for the last uh, few months on this channel. We just read through it. Uh, piece by piece, uh, it's just very interesting information, and for the last few weeks already, probably over a month, we've been learning a lot about Rav Nassim of Brest, a lot of stories about him. So if you want to catch up, just go on the channel, find the previous videos, and we are going to start now, continuing learning about Rav Nassim. We're almost finished, we have like probably two more videos just in this volume, and then we'll probably move on to another volume of stories. But anyway... Rav Nelson says, I have students that serve Hashem, that even Rabbi Nachman, he, he, he did not have such students. What does that mean? Because Rav Nelson had students and Talmidim that would sit in the forest for full nights outside the city in the forest and they would scream out in Davni like wild animals like the way that Rabbi Nachman actually wanted. And the Chassidim explain this, so why was this not happening, obviously, in Rabbi Nachman's life? And the Chassidim explain it, that in Rabbi Nachman's life, um, uh, what's it called? That Rav Nassim was not able to speak out everything that he was macabre from Rabbi Nachman, Right until after Rabbi Nachman died, he started speaking out more, and he was able to bring out the full light of what he got from Rabbi Nachman, and therefore he was able to strengthen his Talmud to, to do these types of things and to go out to the forest. There was definitely people, you know, in the forest by Rabbi Nachman's time also, but 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 Rabbi Nachman was was able to spread it even further, and therefore he had different types of students that were following him than what Rabbi Nachman had. Interesting fact about Rav Nassim that it says over here is that Rav Nassim was a expert moil, a person who does circumcisions. Another time, another story. Pam, one time when Rav Nassim was in Teplik, he was sitting at a table and he was eating the food that we call selic beets or borscht. And one of the chassidim asked him a, a certain etza. And Rav Nassim did not answer him. And he asked Rav Nassim again. And, if, and again, Rav Nassim, he didn't say anything. And he asked him again. And Rav Nassim said, he says, I don't even know how to give eights to myself if I should eat another spoonful of beets or not. Because maybe it's enough, maybe it's not enough. And you want already that I should answer you right away. <laughs> One time, on a certain fast of Bahab, maybe it was Bahab, or some people say it was Chav Sivan, which are days that people fast, certain Chasidim or whatever, Rav Nassim ate and he did not fast. And when one of the Anash saw that he was eating, he also wanted to be Mekel for himself, also to not fast. And Rav Nassim said, Ma? He says, you're comparing yourself to me. He said, my, he said that, Rav, sorry, Rav Nassim said, my eating is like pure and clear. Meaning that Rav Nassim was able to make tikkunim while he was eating instead of fasting. But the guy who didn't want to fast, he was he would not be able to do that. So that's why Rav Nassim told him that he still has to fast. Very cool. Rabbi Baruch who was the son-in-law of Rav Nassim. He married Chana Tzirl, Rav Nassim's daughter, Chana Tzirl, for his wife, right? So he didn't come to Uman Rosh Hashanah in the first year of his marriage. Even though he was close to Brasov and everything like that. So now the Chassidim wanted to talk to him about this. Like, you know, why didn't you come to Uman Rosh Hashanah? Shana Bishayna, fine, whatever, but still... So Rav Nassim says, let him be. He said to them, I took him for a son-in-law and not for a chassid. 
I mean, he didn't want to put pressure on him. Rav Nassim was like, I, I didn't, I'm not expecting him to become a brasil or chassid or whatever. He's my son-in-law. We don't, we don't have to put pressure on him. But anyway, afterwards, he became very close to wrestle and the stomach he came to Gemara for Hashanah. And the same, another story about this guy, Rabbi Baruch, who married the daughter of Rav Nassim. At, oh, so he married her after she got divorced from... Rabbi Nachman ben Rabbi Aaron, the Rav Ha'ir of Breslov, right? So first she was married to a guy named Rabbi Nachman, who was the son of, of Rav Aaron, who was the Rav of Breslov, very big character in Breslov, obviously, um, because their marriage did not work out, right? And Rabbi Baruch, he was a big flamdin, until even the Misnagdim were, were like shocked and silenced that Rav Nassim was Zaycha to such a person that would marry his daughter. That, you know, such a big Talmud Chacham would marry a breast of his daughter, Oy vey. Um In Yadua Im Haya Dain Bakr or Garush Vasvar Nasen Shulay Haya Bakr. Yeah, it could be that he was also divorced. And he also married a divorced girl. But there's a Machlaikis if he was divorced or not. Okay. These are us all information that we gotta know, right? Um, it's known that Rav Nassim was, was nostalgic. He passed away on Arab Shabbos on the fast day of Asar B'tevis in the year Tafri, in the year whatever. Um, and he was brought to Kfur on Maitzah Shabbos. He made a whole entire video about this whole entire story. It's like an hour long if you want to find it on my channel and go watch it. Um, and when they came back from the from the Kfura, the Shemayim became clear and they were able to be Mikhadish to Levana. They were able to do Kiddush Levana Kedin. And it was a very, very big parallel because in those days in Ukraine, the winter days, like there was used to be tons of clouds. Um, and it wasn't normal for the sky to be super clear. The Rimzu Anash and the Anash hinted that that this is the begin of what the Chazal say in Zoyar, Chelik Beis Kufnun Ches, Pnei Yeshua ke Pnei Levana. The Pnei Yeshua, sorry, not the, sorry, not the Pnei Yeshua. The face of Yeshua was like shining like the moon, right? Because and Rav Nassim is like it is Bechinas Yeshua because he's like the student of Moshe Rabbeinu of Rabbi Nachman Kilu. So just like Yeshua was a student of Moshe um, Rabbeinu, so also Rabbi Nach so also Rav Nassim was a student of Rabbi Nachman, and he was like Yeshua. So that's cool. Pam, one time, Kishidibar Rav Nassim, when Rav Nassim was speaking, uh, that what a person has to do to, to have Yishav Adas in this world, right? He has to think about the, he has to think about what he's doing in this world. He has to have Yishav Adas. Amari says, even after a person dies, right? If he had Yishav Adas, before he dies, Kishu Adayin Oid Ba'il Mazeh, this is also very good. Amru and the Brasil say the the Chasidim said she came the sky and by Shnifter Barav Shabbos who bought the kfur be 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 Moitzi Shabbos Kodesh right Vahoy Shabbos Etzloy Lizman Yishev Adas what does that mean and he had time on Shabbos to Yishev Adas before he went to the next world Rav Nosson was very Nifter was already in Yishev Adas on Shabbos okay that's deep whatever that's crazy stuff. On that same, well, I was still talking about stuff that we already spoke about a little bit in this in this other video. On that Friday night, after Rav Nassim died, he died on Arab Shabbos, and, he, and Rav Nassim was already was lying on the floor in his house before Kfura. Rabbi Aaron of Breslov said, "We knew, we know what Rabbi Nachman says in Lakute Maran, Chelik Beis Simen Zayin Al Apostik VeYeshua Benun Mali Ruach Chachma, He Samach Moshe's Yod Avalav. Right? It says in the Pasuk, Yeshua Benun was full of wisdom, spirit of wisdom, because Moshe Rabbeinu put his hands on him. Eskavin Rabbeinu Ba'ar Moshe Salav. This is what Rabbeinu was saying about Rav Nassan as well. It was known that Rav Nassan died in the city of Breslov on Arab Shabbos. And on Friday night, Rav Naftali, who was also a big Talmud of 
Rabbi Nachman, also a big friend of Rabbi Nassim, who he lived in Uman, and he saw in his dream, he saw Rabbi Nassim running very fast. And he said, Rabbi Nassim, where are you going? He said, and, and Rabbi Nassim answered him in the dream, he said, me, I'm going straight to Rabbi Nachman. Um, and Rabbi Naftali woke up, and he already knew from this dream that Rabbi Nassim had died. And the breasts of us say, the Anash say, that from this dream, we could see how Rav Nassim was already zoichet to come to Rabbi Nachman even before he died. Even, sorry, even before he was buried, because the burial was on Mighty Shabbos, and he saw this dream on Friday night. So that's also pretty wild. <coughs> sorry. When it was made known to the Breslavers in Uman that Rav Nassim had died, in Breslav, Rav, Rav Naftali says, I already saw in Rosh Hashanah in the way that he was dancing that he was going to leave us this year. That Rav Nassim was dancing with such a slavas that Rav Naftali knew something was up. On the last Maishu Shabbos of Rav Nassim's life, which was the previous Shabbos before he died, because he died on Friday. Rav Nassim cried a lot during Abdallah, as it was told over in the Mikhtav HaMesapur Mehistakusay, which we read in a different video, this Mikhtav of Teplik, how they wrote it all out, what exactly happened, so you can watch that video too. And during that Abdallah, he was kept on saying the words, Hine Kel Yishu, Hine he, whatever you say that part of Abdullah and then it says Veloy Afkhad, Veloy Afkhad. He kept on saying he's like, I'm, he's like, I'm not scared of anything. He was ready to go. By Rav Nassim's funeral, there was a guy there, his name was Rabbi Meir Leib Hanapach, and Lukhuna Rablair made Rav Meir Leib Blecher. So he Talmud the Khaver Shell Rav Nassim. He was a Talmud and a friend of Rav Nassim, Lamar. He said about Rav Nassim that he was a true emistic yid. And this is how a Jew should be. And Rav Ambar Nachman, when he used to say this story that this guy said about Rav Nassim, he would keep on saying that this is the best praise that somebody could say on a Jew, that he was a kosher emist yid. That's the ikr. Before Rav Nassim died, he asked the Chassidim around him, who were standing there, to read in front of him the first two stories in the Sefer Sipuri Maisis, which is the Lost Princess and the Melech and the Kesar. Um, and when they came to the end of the story, of the second story, where the where the princess says, and you are the Ben Melech, let's go to our house, because she was the true Ziva, read the story. See the she, that Rav Nassim told him to keep on reading these these words over and over again. And then he was nifter a little bit right after that. Interesting, I already read these stories, but in a different video, but let's uh, keep on reading. Because why not? 13 minutes in. Okay. The, on the Shabbos before Rav Nassim died, so the previous Shabbos, Omar Be'es, he said by, Shuz, by uh, when he was saying Torah by Shal Shudas, he was learning one of the halachas, he was saying or one of the halachas from Lekut HaLachas. And then he became very weak. And because of his weakness, he went to go to Avamarev in his house. And on the way to his house, he said to one of the chassidim, whose name was Rabbi, whose name was Rabbi Yaakov, Yankel, he says, it's for sure true that Hashem is going to be, he's, he's going to finish and he's going to win. That Hashem always wins at the end. And he was saying that even in his weakness, Hashem was blessed and that he was able to say Torah at least before he died like that. Okay, hold on one second over here. This is, I think this is the last story about, the, about his passing away and then we could read a few more. Before Rav Nassim passed away, he saw Rabbi Nachman in a dream. He was holding in his hand the Sefer Anishach, the burnt book. And Rav Nassim asked 
Rabbeinu to learn within the Sefer, and Rabbeinu says to learn the Sefer. You, he said that you, he said to understand the Sefer and to learn it. You, you, you have to come to me already. Meaning, for such a big thing like this, you have to come. And you have to die. And when Rav Nassim told us before the Chesidim, he said, that Hashem, that, sorry, that Rav, that Rav Nassim said that even though Rav Nassim said to him one time that Hashem is with you and don't be scared, he said, from this dream I was scared because that's, you know, intense stuff. Okay, now we're back to regular stuff. Rav Nassim says that the Indian of Rabbeinu is Rosh Hashanah. But the Indian of me is Yom Kippur. And there were certain chassidim who used to go to him for Yom Kippur. But like it wasn't like a big thing. It never really became like a big thing. Like Umar Rosh Hashanah, obviously. Okay, here we go. This is an interesting story. They, one time they were saying to Rav Nassim that one time... Rabbi Nachum of Chernobyl was in Malav. And he was there for Shabbos. So after the evening in the morning, Rabbi Nachum went to his father's house, Rabbi David Tzvi HaGadol, the Kaddish al -Yai. Sorry, he went to Rabbi Nachum's father's house, Rabbi David Tzvi HaGadol, the Kaddish al -Yai, to make, you know, have a little Kiddush, whatever, because they were friends and they knew each other. Right, this is before right be, before Rab Nachum became close to the Baal Shem Tov. He was friends with Rabbi David Tzvi, who was Rab Nachum's father. And when Rab Nachum came to the house, he says, he said to him, Rabbi David Tzvi said to him, Ayisi mechabed eschem bekedesh ulam. He said, I would make kiddush with you, but my wife, Harabhanit, the Rebetzin, is still not home from shul. And Rabbi Nachum says, Baal Shem Tov Amar. The Baal Shem Tov says that when that when that when Mashiach comes, all the Ezra's Nashim in shuls will be cancelled. They'll be gone. I guess like whatever. I don't know. That's interesting. And after Rav Nassim heard this, he says, he says we did not. He said, we were not makabal this from Rabbeinu. We were, he said that Rabbeinu said that tefillahs of women are very important in front of Hashem. And meaning that, like, obviously you shouldn't close the Ezra's Nashim of Shuls. I'm not sure what the Baal Shem Tov means by that, but I'm sure he knows what he's talking about more than me. All right, last story over here today. Rabbi Akiva Velvo, he became close to the Derech of Rabbeinu. This guy, Rabbi Akiva Velvul, became close to Breslov because of something, something that he heard that Rabbi Nassim was speaking on Erdem Kippur. What was he saying? He was saying that the, what do we say in the Payet Shal Mosul Peseder Avoid the Zahavim Maver Luvan Loivish Avoid the Sayyim Bibig De Lavu? Right, the, the, the avoid of the day and white clothing, whatever. Right, Uber Bazev Rav Nosson Shenich Nosson Lifnai Vilifnim Shemraviz Al Acher Petrosa Shaladum. That when what does it mean that the Kohen Gadol was you know inside? It says it's hinting <clears throat> that after a person dies, they take from him all the big days of Vafilos Achoshin Im Havon Toivus. All your riches and everything doesn't come with you, right? When you go up to Shemayim. The only thing that comes to you is Big Day Lavan. <coughs> Sorry. And the Big Day Lavan <coughs> are the good things that you did in this world. This is a very simple thing, but these words were able to enter into this guy's heart. And he became very close to Rav Nassim Zal. That is where we're up to. And we will continue this next week. And on Thursday, we will be reading some Purim stories, getting ready for Purim. Maybe, maybe a little bit of Tuba Shvat also. Those Tuba Shvats on Thursday. And yeah, that's it.